Our call to worship comes from Isaiah 42. Here is my servant, my chosen one, in whom my soul delights. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will be a light, open the eyes of the blind, bring prisoners out of the darkness and out of dungeons and prison houses. So let's respond to this call to worship and sing together. Let us pray. God of freedom and justice, you break us out of the prisons we create for ourselves, for others and for each other. We draw close to you now with joy and confidence. We wish to hear your word whispered to our hearts. Liberated, liberator God, set us free through the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may truly magnify your name and see your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our debts, as we forgive those who are indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory, for ever and ever. Amen. A very warm welcome to this Commitment for Life service of worship. Commitment for Life is the United Reformed Church's Global Justice Programme. We work in partnership with Global Justice Now and Christian Aid. Our four partner regions are Zimbabwe, Bangladesh, Central America and Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories. In September of 2019, 22 members of the United Reformed Church went on an educational visit to Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories. This was in response to a 2016 General Assembly resolution encouraging all of us to learn more about what was actually going on in the region. Our group leader was the Reverend Brian Jolly, and he tells us more about the trip. All of those uh folk here we have visited over these past 10 days have, um, have given to us really the same message. Uh, they have said to us sincerely and deeply thank you so much for coming and being with us. Um, uh, they have said to us uh, please hear our story uh, and please go home and tell others of our story. Uh, because so often we feel forgotten uh, and neglected. of the object of the exercise of this visit was that those who came from the uh, synods of the United Reformed Church could inform folk in their synods um, of the nature of the situation here following uh, their visit. There, there were concerns within the denomination about matters concerning Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories. Several resolutions were brought to uh, the 2016 assembly. There wasn't agreement and they were referred to a facilitation group which found the agreement of the assembly and that resolution included a request to provide for the synods and uh, local churches to be better informed about the situation here. 
on our first day we were in Bethlehem we spent part of the morning visiting the uh, Church of the Nativity and went to visit Munter Isaac and hearing about the ministry of the Lutherans particularly in Bethlehem. You would wish that the Western Church is silent uh, and it stays like this. In other words, if you're silent and leave us alone, maybe that's better. Because the Western Church is not silent. The Western Church is part of the problem. It's justifying this and it's funding this. Following our meeting with uh, Munter Isaac, we travelled to another part of the town of Bethlehem to the Dehesha refugee camp where we were given a tour of the camp uh, and we had the history and the, the background of the uh, refugee camp explained to us. Uh, we met with Nidal uh, Abu Zalouf, he explained the background to the Olive Tree Project and then Mohanad uh, took our group on uh, uh, on a tour of some of the uh, project's work. The work of the Joint Advocacy Initiative Olive Tree Project is Christian work. It seeks to support uh, local farmers uh, across the West Bank whose olive trees are frequently uprooted, destroyed by settlers. The work of the Olive Tree Project is to uh, replant trees where they've been uprooted or destroyed in order that the farming community can continue its work, uh, can uh, retain its land. Lawrence Moore has uh, been a, a key part of this visit. He has, on most days of the visit, led the group in Bible study at selected uh, sites about our following in the footsteps of the radical Jesus. He has talked to us about empire and how we as followers of Jesus walking in his way should, uh, should respond uh, in the face of empire. During this visit we've been alongside Palestinian people, Christians and Muslims, but mostly we have been listening to uh, members of the Indigenous Church here. They want us to understand their situation. They want us to share their story. Uh, they want not to be forgotten. Uh, they want local churches in the UK to respond. Their deepest desire is that that response uh, should be more folk coming to visit them, to be alongside them. Uh, they want for folk in the UK to understand more their situation uh, and how difficult this is uh, for them to live. They want our solidarity. They want our prayers to be informed prayers. And they want us to respond with generous hearts and minds. They want us to be peacemakers in, uh, in this very difficult uh, situation. is taken from Luke chapter 4 starting at verse 14. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in the synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. He set the oppressed free to proclaim the jubilee year of the Lord's favour. Thanks be to God for the reading of God's Word. Our sermon today was preached while we were in Jerusalem. We stayed at the St. Andrew's Guest House and William and I were roomies. We stood on the patio of the hotel overlooking Jerusalem at night 
to make this clip. The Reverend William Thomas Young, until recently Minister in the Synod of Scotland at Clydebank Morrison Memorial and Drum Chapel Essenside, is now serving pastor at Covenant Baptist Church in Washington, D.C. Let us hear the word of the Lord from Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous, for then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. Lord, do good to those who are good, to those who are upright in Israel. But those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Friends, as my London Marathon shoes that I'm wearing shake the dust of what the ancient Hebrews called Zion, I'm struck at the poignancy of this psalm of ascent, a song that the pilgrims sung as they made their trek to Jerusalem for the high festivals. It is obvious, even then, that people faced dangers reaching this sacred spot on which we and other URC pilgrims have been walking. The text is clear, though. There is no distinction between chosen people and no good people, but between those who trust in God and those who seek to do fellow pilgrims harm. As our EasyJet flight reached Tel Aviv on Wednesday, I was struck at how calm the Mediterranean Sea looks from 20,000 feet in the air. The peace there is a stark contrast to what I might find on land, I thought. As we entered Jerusalem, the words of another Psalm of Ascent, Psalm 122, rushed through my mind. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. As the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Passing pristine, well-paved, modern Jerusalem, we enter a checkpoint to enter Bethlehem, just 10 kilometers south. Silence filled the bus as we saw segregation personified. Maybe it was the tiredness from the long flight, but the difference between the two cities is obvious. Rubbish compacted, it seems, in every corner in Bethlehem. Unfinished buildings which tell the story of government restrictions and years of violence inflicted on the community. Chaotic driving, constant honks of the horns, and near accidents, the result of few street lights or signs in Bethlehem. Certainly not as many street lights as you see in Israeli territory. In the evening, the sound of the call to Islamic prayer reminds me that I'm not in Kansas anymore. Even here, Palestinians speak of the difficulties visiting families, celebrating feast days, tending to emergencies due to restrictions placed upon them. Not even the Palestinian government can protect the people from being treated like second-class citizens in their own land. Yet, their own theological understanding of their land is not that they are a chosen people for this land, but that God is the owner of the land. The parallels between here and race relations in South Africa and the United States are very evident to all of us. As with my country and others, what is necessary is a revolution of what 
a fr friend of ours, Nidal, a leader of the Olive Tree Project here in here in Israel, here in Palestine, calls what he calls people moved by beautiful values. He said, for once we start speaking only politics and interests, there is no hope. Now we're in Jerusalem, earlier today on the Mount of Olives, as we heard a cacophony of human sounds of Lawrence Moore teaching over pilgrims from other nations singing and speaking the Lord's Prayer. From the distance, the call to Muslim afternoon prayer from the north, south, east, and west, it seemed, and birds chirping around the olive trees. It's an extraordinary experience. Not even a wall can partition us from God's presence. As the psalmist wrote, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. Let us pray. Living God, you are indeed living amongst us in the messiness of our circumstances. You walk with us, turn us from pilgrims to children. May we have the good sense to follow your way of peace. May we never forget the circumstances of the most vulnerable. And may our understanding of who you are never be complicit in the suffering of our brothers and sisters in Palestine and wherever segregation and indifference reign. But Lord, lead us to sympathy, solidarity, and action. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to all of you who so diligently work for peace in Palestine and Israel through our Commitment for Life program. If you'd like to know more about the work of Commitment for Life, feel free to go to our website, which I will link here and also in the description below. If you'd like to watch other videos about our trip, I'll also put a link in the description below. Let's say the grace to and for one another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.